hi guys welcome back to my channel so today i'm back with another video today's video is a recap and this movie is on lifetime um and it's going to be also on the lifetime movie app and it's called sins in the suburbs so basically it starts off with this aspiring art restorer um by the name of heather she has a best friend named jesse they live in portland i believe um, and this new guy comes into town, his name is Tyler, and things just start, you know, spiraling out of control. So this, she, um, Heather ends up getting a job from this prestige, um, high-end lady. She ends up talking her way into giving her the, a job to, um, restore one of her, I think, grandmother's paintings and, the lady paid her. She was kind of skeptical, but she ended up, you know, so reluctantly. And she had to persuade her, you know. And she was able to get the gig. So she gave her $5,000 and had to took home the painting. Um, That same day when she got home, Tyler was taking pictures of her from across the street. He's her new neighbor. He moved in across the street. So she comes in, she was talking to the painting, like, you want to drink? You want to drink? Drinks on me. Like, it's flashing her check around, like, listen, listen, listen I'm going to get a drink. I'm going to drink. Um, he's basically been taking pictures of her, but she's oblivious. She don't really pay no mind to him. After she gets comfortable, she takes her shower, whatever, and then she starts to restore the, pa the painting. And she sees him, um, she sees him outside staring he's doing something in his truck and you know i guess that's a long glance from her house to his house even though it's across the street that you can see clearly what's going on but yeah he notices that she was checking him out and eventually he did come over to her house and he basically said he don't have no water on so she he he actually used some hot water um she did she gave him a bottle of water and he's basically scoping out her place um, after that, he leaves, he goes to his house. But what I didn't understand was, like, she, he was like, I got to go wash this funk off for me. How if you ain't got no water? I know that one bottle of water was not going to do any justice. But he leaves, goes to his house, washes his hands, throws a bottle of water in the garbage. Yeah, mm -hmm. so she goes back to doing her painting. So the next day, there, oh, he asked her to go, like, to hang out or whatever. So they go to this bar, and Heather's there with her friend Jesse, and Tyler's there as well. So the bartender, she recognizes him because I, from another state, and he, she was asking him questions, and he was kind of, like, standoff. It's just like, I don't know what to talk about. You got the wrong guy. But she was admin, like, he was the guy, and he was dating her best friend. Well, one of her friends. But I guess that girl turned up missing. So, after that, that night, when the bartender was closing up, oh, she heard, she figured out his real name was Robert. And he went back to the table. He told the other girls, Jesse and Heather, that she overheard that um his name was Tyler so she was like hmm so later that after that night when the bar was closing she cleaned up she was taking out the trash she strangled her to death and then he took her earrings and that was that um so a few days went by she started um Heather started hanging out more with Heather and Jesse started hanging out more with Tyler and Tyler was like um it's all nice and everything but maybe it could just be me me and you. At the same time, Greg, which is Heather's ex-boyfriend, he kept calling, kept keeps calling her, trying to, you know, talk to her, I guess, reconcile their relationship. Um, come to find out he cheated on her and she wasn't going for it. And then Tyler got extremely mad for what reason, I do not know. But he got mad and he kind of like, you know, started doing some... Oh, he went in her garbage because he... Heather found out that Greg sent her some flowers, so she threw them in the trash. So while she's on the phone talking to him, Greg on the phone, um, he's snooping through her trash outside, and he finds the card that Greg sends him. He goes over to his house, and he starts looking, looking him up. 
and he found him and he finds pictures with her of Greg and Heather together and he just starts getting mad. So he starts plotting his plans, you know, take him out. Um, he tried to do so while Greg was at his work because he was scoping out the place and everything. Um, he couldn't because he was with another co-worker. So he was like playing the room. So he let, let that go on. Um, Heather, she continues working on the painting. She also gets invited over to his house because he wanted to cook for her. He, they do that. He ends up giving her this picture. She takes the picture home. The picture reminded her of her mom. Mind you, he has a whole, like, he's supposed to be a photographer. So he has, like, this whole, what do you call it, red room for, like, the photography to, you know, set it, to hang up the dry, all that stuff. He has all these pictures of her and all these other women that he done came in contact with all in that room. Then he has jewelry that he took from the slain victims he killed. But nobody knows that yet. So she, Heather goes back to restoring her pictures of the of that lady's grandmother. Um, Tyler just starts getting more suspicious, and he starts, you know, trying to figure out, um, going off with his plan to, you know, get Greg, whatever. So he's days past, whatever, and he ends up cutting his hand on a razor, like it's so. It's, it's so crazy, like, his thought process is, like, dark and sinister, whatever, whatever. He ends up cutting his hand, and then he runs over to um Heather's house, saying he cut his hand. So she goes upstairs to um find some butterfly bandages that she didn't have in her first day kit downstairs. So when her going upstairs, he's able to get a copy of one of her keys to her house. And on um, doing so, one of the keys that she has, he ended up getting blood on it. So he goes to, after doing that, he goes back to his house with the key. He takes the bandages off and he goes to the pharmacy to do um, key copy. He gets that done. So later that night, he's dressed in all black with gloves and all. He goes sneaking around her house. She notices that she was getting ready for bed, but you know, she did her surround check, but she didn't check, check, but you know, she guess she was tired. So She's doing that. She goes to bed. And then she he ends up going to her house. He steals one of her paintings. I don't even think that she knew was missing, but whatever. He ends up destroying the picture, that painting that she was working on. Um, She calls the cops and calls her friend, Jesse. And then Tyler, doing so, he also plants like, a picture of Heather with her ex, Greg, in the shape of a heart, reading with some messages. So... Heather thinks that it was Greg, but in all actuality, it was Tyler. Um, long story short, I don't want to keep dragging this out for you guys. So, long story short, um, oh, the next day, the police um go investigate Greg at his job. He tells them what happened. His coworker, um. Admitted to, you know, being together, but he ends up getting fired. So he goes to Heather's house to confront her. Like, listen, because of you, I lost my job, but my co-worker didn't or whatever. So basically he was, you know, with his boss. Because the whole entire time when the cops came to his job, you could see she was like, don't say nothing. But it was her. So she ends up losing, he is, she I guess she fired him. So he ends up losing his job. So he goes back to Heather's house and Jesse's there because the cops never came. And then Tyler kind of played it off like he was asleep or whatever, but he was home. And then you see him coming in running, and then he goes into the house, and the cops was taking pictures and stuff like that. So he's like, hmm. So Greg confronts Heather while um Jesse's outside, and then out of nowhere, Tyler comes and starts punching him. Like, that was weird. You just come punching this guy out of nowhere. You don't even know him. Like, she didn't even say, I need help or whatever. Then she st and then Heather starts calling Tyler to get off of him. And he did, like, kind of, like, just blacked out. And then eventually he came to him just, like, and he ran off to his house. So, Greg is basically gasping for his life. He manages to get enough air into the system. He was able to get up and leave. He said he's going to sue all of them. And he leaves. Um, Jesse and Heather goes back into the house. And she starts talking to him, like, listen, you need to come over, stay with me for a few days or whatever. And then 
Tyler's back home, whatever, doing whatever the weird stuff he is. And um, Heather starts noticing, like, maybe Tyler's not who he say he is. So, um, Jesse leaves to go home, and Heather tells her she'll be there in an hour. Uh, she took a shower, whatever, and then she has to pack down her car. Um, but she also goes over to Tyler's house to apologize about what happened, whatever. But doing so... Um, Greg comes back over to apologize as well, but he notices, he's calling her phone, he notices that her phone and stuff is in the car, and she's nowhere to be found, so he decides, I'm going to go over to, he starts calling her phone, he starts hearing the ring, so he ends up going over to Tyler's house, and Tyler and Heather is in the house, he used the rules of him hanging up the picture that Heather did for her, him in the house so she could get her inside, because I guess he was going to kill him. So, he, Greg goes to Tyler's house, knocks on the door and asks him to tell her there. And, he's, and mind you, Greg is hearing this knocking sound. And he's like, well, where is that coming from? It's Heather in here. He was like, then he basically bum rushed his way into Tyler's house. But Tyler let him fall. And then Tyler knocked him out. No, he actually killed him. He killed him. And then, um... He goes back to where he put Heather in his room with all the pictures and stuff. And he she ended up breaking the glass while he ended because Tyler and Greg were struggling, fighting, whatever. So that was whatever. So then Tyler goes but yeah, because Tyler goes back anywhere Heather is. So doing so at that time, um Heather breaks a glass of a picture off the um picture frame she picks it up so he comes in and she's slowly walking around it's a dark room but even though it's a red light still a dark room so she's walking around and when he gets close to her she stabs him and i guess in the face and then she runs out and goes into the house to check to see how greg is doing or whatever but she should have just ran outside and like just left it alone but you know you gotta go check on regardless of how you may feel about that person she went and checked on him and then he came out of nowhere he ganged up on them then they end up, she ends up making her way outside. And then he and Tyler ends up going to strangle her. And lo and behold, Jesse, she comes in the clutch and she knocks him out with a shovel. And they both hug and cry. And he started regaining his consciousness and he's going to hit them with the shovel. And Heather hits him with a metal garden hose sprayer. And he falls onto the ground. Then the police and stuff come. They eventually take him and put him in the psych ward. Because the boy is nuts. Um, Greg, he's dead. Um, Heather, she decides to move. Oh, she also told the lady about her painting being destroyed. So she had to give her her money back or whatever. So after that, she puts her house up for sale by her, her friend Jessica. because she's a realtor. Um, and she leaves to go to San Francisco. Jesse's still in town because Tyler didn't know where she lived at, so he, he wasn't a threat to her. And, you know, he's in the hospital trying to get to the next victim. So, basically, he was a serial killer, um, going from state to state, killing women. And I don't think nobody put it together. If it wasn't for that bartender who was, like, so close to nailing it, she would have just waited it out a little bit longer. She probably would have stayed up and alive and also was able to, you know, Get him arrested and not lose her life. But, you know, things happen for a reason so that the next person can, you know, move ahead. But, yeah, I hope y'all guys enjoyed this recap. It's called Sins in the Suburbs. Yeah, it's a crazy movie, but it's also good. So, y'all got to be careful who y'all come in contact with. Be mindful of your surroundings. Like, don't tell people too much of your information because it ain't none of their business. What well, little they know, the better the better you can protect yourself or your family if anything like that comes into play. But like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this recap. Please, you can catch it on Lifetime. You can catch it on the Lifetime app. Um, give me a like, comment down below, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button so you can know if I upload. And I will see you on the next one.